Hey, welcome okay. in. You're listening to the daily version of the Corland Economics Report. I'm Al Corland, and I appreciate you joining me. It is Thanksgiving down here in the United States, November 23rd. I have James Turk on the line with me right now. James is, well, you know what? He doesn't even need an introduction. Why do I even have to say anything? James, thank you so much for joining me, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks, Al. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Okay, on Kitco this morning, gold is, is up about two and a half bucks, seventeen ninety five eighty. As we are recording right now, silver, on the other hand, is uh, is down just a little bit. Silver is down a whopping penny, thirty one seventy five. I would have thought that with the situation in Europe that broke yesterday, Wednesday, uh, in terms of the bond sale in Germany that, for all practical purposes, failed, I would have thought that we would have seen a much larger rise in the price of gold. We are seeing a bit of a rise today. Day after a bit of a fall yesterday, less than 1% in the price yesterday, but I would have thought it would have been substantially higher. Any comments on that? Yeah, you know, sometimes moves are a little bit counterintuitive. There's a little bit always of, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news type of event. So, uh, you know, I'm not too surprised by it. Uh, also, you have to remember, Al, that we're at month end and option expiry is going on. Comix went off the other day. We still have over the counter market. Uh, options to be resolved. And typically you see a lot of pressure on the price when these options are coming off the board. So I think that's probably what's happening. And with, you know, today being the Thanksgiving holiday and markets very quiet anyway, very, very quiet day. Yeah, it is a very quiet day. If you were to take out your crystal ball, and you're very good at reading that thing, what would you say is going to happen to precious metals, gold on the one hand, silver on the other hand, price-wise between now and the end of 2011? You know, I still think there's the potential for two. Uh, 2000 on gold before the end of this year. We're rapidly running out of time, but I've been holding to this view, you know, even with this little correction here, because there's so much potential buying power. We're seeing it coming in on the correction. There's a lot of money waiting on the sidelines. You know, you, you get a little push upward on the gold price. I mean, you could pop very, very quickly like we did back in August. And if we get a similar type of pop, you're going to see 2000 by the end of the year. If you don't see it by the end of this year, I think you're going to see it in the first quarter of 2000. You know, I'll tell you what I'm thinking right now. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's the, the fundamental reasons are all so strongly in place. It's just really hard to disagree with that statement. But I think the one thing that a lot of people, James, aren't considering right now is uh, is the situation in the Middle East. I mean, the situation in, in Europe with the with the German bonds, I mean, with the everything. I mean, the headline this morning, one of the headlines in the financial press this morning was Euro on death watch. But, you know, you look at what's happening in the Middle East. You look at uh, the situation with Syria, for example, which is getting more and more tenuous. And I'll tell you, that could very well trigger this could tr- trigger this this thing that would take gold way above 2,000 and silver back up into the, say, let's say, the low 40s. And I think there's a very good possibility there. Yeah, it really could. And, you know, I follow the premiums and import numbers in the Middle East very closely. And there's been renewed activity in Turkey in terms of gold imports. And as a consequence of that, I think that's going to put good uh, support underneath the gold market as well. Everybody's watching these different events unfold, you know, not only in the Middle East, but Europe. And, you know, even to a certain extent, you know, what's going on in Asia with the higher inflation rate uh, pretty much across the board over there. And, you know, all of these things ultimately mean that people are going to look increasingly to gold and silver, you know, to preserve their purchasing power. The perfect storm, I would have to say that no one in their right mind, I don't think right now, could say that conditions aren't very, very opportune for an increase in both prices. James, thank you so much, my friend.